Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, so today what we're going to do is, since we took the solid part already, and uh, I overdid it just to show you guys how to break down a PC in my last video. If you didn't see it, go check it out. But now what we're going to do is figure out the placement of our radiator. Now since it's a 120, I didn't go 240, so it won't be taking up the front. I'm going to end up putting it here as the rear exhaust. And I'm going to go with a push configuration. He rises up. Yeah, so we're just going to use it as an exhaust right here. But I've got to change the fan, so I'll be using the fan that came with the kit. Because that's a high static fan, and that's what you want with a radiator. It's got to be able to just push the air through. It's got to force because the fins. So we're going to take out this rear fan. And since it's still NZXT, I could just connect this to the CAM software. It'll be able to be controlled right from the software from CAM. But yeah, just we're going to use it as an exhaust. It's a 120, so the radiator will fit right here. It won't give me any problems. It'll go right here like this. And this will go in something like this. We'll figure it out. I'll see. If not, then I'll have to put it to the front, and I will. But I'd rather have it as, a, as an exhaust. So yeah, let, let's see. So now, let's disconnect this fan, get it out of the system, put this to the side, and then put our new fan onto our radiator, get our radiator ready, get our brackets ready, show you which ones you should use for Intel or AMD, because you have a few choices here, and you got a few bolts. So I'm gonna show you which ones you need, which ones you don't. A fan that's made for static pressure from a regular fan that's just for airflow. This fan right here has seven blades and they're fat blades. This one has nine and they're thin. This is made to just bring air in, you know, normal fan. When it hits the blades, it kind of shoots out all over. This is made to push as much air, as much as it can, as strong as it can through the radiator because the fins. You see your fins right there? So it's gotta push air straight through those fins. So it's gotta have a lot of pressure. So you want to make sure to use this type of fan. Now, back in the day when radiators and AIOs first came out, you did use this fan. It, it used to be that way, but they got smart, came out with these. So this is how you're going to make sure you get the best airflow through your radiator. So that way you have no problems with a push pull or whatever configuration you go with. Thought I'd just mention that in here for you. So that way you just don't grab a regular fan and toss it on. I mean, you could, but I mean, you, you wouldn't really like it down the road. So, and a good rule of thumb, when you have your bolts, separate them. Make sure you have all the bolts that are in the instruction and separate them. They have different types of washers. These are plastic, look like little rotary gears. These are regular washers. You have these spring loaded thumb screws, smaller little M5s. So make sure you situate that. And another thing is, Put your radiator, your fan to your radiator before you put all this in the case. Have all this set up so it's just put in and done. Also, there's a little notch so you could put the wire right through your fan so that way you get to your screws. And for some reason, story of my life, every time I buy fans, I have never gotten arrows. Ever. They are nowhere to be found. I've looked everywhere. I know that where the bars are, this is the way the airflow goes. So it would go that way. I get that. But still, it, I've never, this is NZXT. And they even say it in the book. Yeah, so put your fan on first. If you're going with a push configuration, if you're going with a pull. So yeah, I can't tell you where to mount your fan. So figure out where you're gonna mount your radiator and fan and then we can move on with placing the bracket. But have this ready so it's just put together finished. Help bracket, be careful because there's thermal compound paste right there. And if you're gonna use the original, you don't wanna touch it. This brace needs to come off. It should just come right off. Okay guys, mine's was already out a little bit, but you just put your fingers, do like a little clink and just, you know, put it against your chest if you have to. Take this bracket off. And then you wanna put this bracket back on. So once you have your bracket, you're just going to put it on like that. That's it. So 
half moon side, the, the cut in there, you want to make sure that it goes straight to where the hoses are. Now that that's done, you know, cover it up or something, but figure out something. But I like just get this out of the way and done. That way I don't have to do it after I get the back plate put on or what have you. So let's get to that part. So if you're removing your back plate, you need to make sure there's nothing holding your back plate in. So the brackets that belong to the original cooler need to come out so the back plate can come out, the metal one, so you can replace it with the universal back plate. You'll notice it has recesses in it. See if I get you a better look. Notice they have like little recesses. See the little holes? This is the side. This side goes against the back of the motherboard and this is the bolt side. This is where the bolts will go into. You're gonna take this weird one and you're gonna place it on the side that's not recessed. So make sure you put it in the right side. Put it the right way. You're gonna take the M2 screw. You're gonna place it on the top side of that bolt on the other side of the pl plate. And you're gonna screw it in. I got hands like a surgeon, people. Hands like a surgeon. Like a virgin. Yeah. And then you're gonna screw it in. The, the screw is the one that goes inside the recess. The screw goes inside the recess, not the other one. So there, look at the bracket, how it looks different on the bottom. See it? Has these weird things, has extra holes. No, like that. Get up. Now that the old back plate and your new back plate's done, take the new back plate with the screws and see if it goes in there. It should line up perfectly fine, like a little weird little thing and then guys just make sure it lines up with the holes like so and guess what you've got a back plate my machine is on its side and tilted over so yours should be right side up but just make sure it lines up and that's it I, I wish that they would have put something rubber or something you know that would have been pretty neat then take your spacers these guys Drop them into your motherboard. And then hold the back of the back plate, the new one, and start placing them in. They'll slide down once they hit the thicker part of the screw, and this will hold the back plate up for you. And their spacers, so they're good to have. So just make sure you got everything in nice and snuggy snug. These screws that are by themselves, they're in a little baggie. It actually says, I don't know if you see it, but it says LGA2011. These are for the Intel. So unless that's your socket, do not use these. If you're AM4, don't use them. They're not necessary. These are for the standoffs. I just thought I'd throw that in there because they were all by themselves and they look important. And they are to Intel. So, yeah. But otherwise, we're looking pretty decent, guys. And I'm sorry that everything is out. It does not have to look like this. I just had the part where I actually disassembled and yeah, you guys know, you were there. You were there, you saw it, the boys, you know what's up, street races. So at this point, what I like to do is to start put things away. Things I know I don't need, clear everything off, make it nice and clean. It's clutter and clutter, it, it, it freaks me out. So let's put some pieces that need to go back in here in the motherboard box, like these brackets and uh, NZXT logo to be all freaked out. Make sure it's the right side. You can see it a little bit. Make sure it's proper when you put this in. That way it's clean, it's clear. Make sure the tubes on your radiator would be going down. You want the tubes down on the radiator. That way water does not just gurgle and freak out. So yeah, you won't get no weird noises. But yeah, just make sure your NZT logo is, you know, aligned, looks normal. If it's sideways, you gotta take this off. Just make sure it's lined up and I'm gonna go get my CPU because it would be kind of stupid to do this and not have a CPU. Okay, so what you're gonna use now, you wanna get these ready. These are the screws with the spring in them. And you wanna get the plastic washers, the plastic ones that look like little gears. Get these ready too. So let's get this on since now we actually have to put our we actually installed our CPU, so now let's install. Now that you're ready, either you put yourself a pea-sized amount of thermal paste or you're gonna use what's on here. 
I'm gonna leave what's on here. I have my reasons. I want to see something. I want to test off that thermal paste I have is any good. So I want to put this one on, get some temps, just run some benchmarks, and then in about two, three weeks, I'm gonna put the other one on. I just want to see if this is any good. I was just always curious if what they put on is any good, and I never really checked. I'm gonna take this off being careful. You don't wanna mess up the thermal paste or else then you mess up our little ideal. So you're gonna get this, making sure everything is the way you want it to be. So make sure your NZXT logo is in the right way. Make sure everything's the right way. All right, so I was made a full out of. The bracket that was on here is the AM4 bracket. The other one is the Intel bracket. I didn't notice it, so yeah. Sorry about that, I apologize, y'all. I didn't even notice, I'm just so used to taking it off. But then again, it came with pre-applied, and usually it came with a tube. I guess they just don't want to give it to us anymore. So, make sure your NZXT logo is the right way. Make sure everything is lining up before you go all the way down. Then you're gonna take your plastic washers. Put your plastic washers around. Now with these, you want to go in at a crisscross pattern. So just get them somewhat in there. Just make sure you feel like that one's locked on. Just get them locked on. Okay, just get them locked on. You don't want to tighten them yet. Get them locked on and go in an X pattern. Don't go clockwise with the screws. Go with an X pattern. What this is gonna do is gonna mash the thermal paste and spread it around. Even though the middle is where everything's at, you still wanna get it all over. And once that happens, guys, find a good place for your fan and your radiator. Even though these are thumb screws, let's use the screwdriver just to get it a little bit tighter. You don't wanna go overbearing, just with confidence. So, you're gonna to wanna to start, find yourself a starting point. Go till you feel it get tight. But when you feel it stop, move on to one in another area. Don't go clockwise. Go diagonal, go zigzag. Oh, it stopped, I'm moving to the next one. I'm not going any further than when it stops. Right when it stops, move to the next one. Stop, now. I'm gonna put that extra turn. A little bit more strength, you'll feel it stop again. And guess what? It's installed. Not too bad. So now that everything's in, if you did take everything out just to give yourself more room, put your stuff back, make sure everything's back, make sure you go every other, and I'm kinda, safe to say that on all motherboards now it's every other slot for your ram because i'm yet to find a motherboard that it's not so it's every other one guys that's it that's dual channel if you don't it won't recognize it so make sure you put it in every other one and put back everything that you need now and uh get your fan and your radiator tightened up i'm gonna get that going and once you have your fan and your radiator hooked up where you want it, at that point, once everything's hooked up where you guys want it, everything's nice, you can start tucking your wires, putting this back through there, get this one, the AIO, make sure, because your AIO header is over here, I think down here somewhere, yeah, right here. So you're gonna wanna tuck, do some moves, make sure it's hidden. So just, and then you're gonna hook up your USB wire, so I'll show you guys those ones, but just, you know, wire management, make it nice and neat. And we have work in the back to do too. So let's get to that. Even though my machine's on its side right now, but it is facing you guys, so it would stand up like this. Pay attention that my hoses are down. You don't want the hoses at the top. You want them at the bottom. Never make, always make sure that your pump Think of it like your heart, above the radiator, below the radiator. You never want it above the radiator. You want it lined or below it a little bit. All right, guys, it's time for the moment of truth. Fan spinning. Infinity logo's on. Let's shut this light off. 
see how we're looking. See if we get to the bios. And we pose. Oh yeah, no, the cam effect is pretty neat. The Infinity logo is pretty cool. And I don't gotta worry about these hoses touching my uh, graphics card because I got a metal backplate. All right, there you go. I'm gonna see if I could do the fan air. Yeah, we know that. We don't wanna run air set up. Let's just get straight with those. All right, guys, here we are. We're in. Uh, we have to go. If, when you first put in your Kraken, the computer's not gonna recognize that there's uh, no fan on your CPU, so it's gonna freak out. Press F1, go into your BIOS, go all the way over to uh, go to advanced mode. Go to then you can do the cam software and what have you if you'd like. I say do it, but guys, she looks pretty cool. I'm gonna fix it a little bit more, but yeah, guys, that's rising hell. I have a video. I'll I'll, fin, I'll put another video real fast, a little clip, so you guys can see it with the little bit of extra red I do put. And, you can see. and guys, that is rising hell. Yeah, I'm digging it. I'm digging it. That's my little devil. I don't put the front. RGBs on in this case because it's too much and I actually toned these down a little bit but I made them brighter just for this all right guys thanks again for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, down in the comments let me know do you guys have the 120 uh, the 240 and let me know your temperatures when you put on your uh, your NZXT M22 Kraken let me know the temps you have when you first put it. I'm gonna wait and see what they are later because yeah, I just wanna know what your temps were. But yeah, guys, thanks again. And I'll have some more videos up for you guys. I have something pretty cool coming up. I think I might have some badass content coming up for you guys. So yeah, guys, thanks again for watching. Much love y'all. Check you guys out later.